Hey everybody and welcome back to Silver Seeker. I want you to take a quick second and imagine what it would be like if you were unable to pay your bills right now, or unable to fill the tank of your car so you could get to work, or even worse, were unable to put food on the table for your family. Believe it or not, that can and has happened to people that keep every dime that they have in the bank. Now, fortunately for a lot of people in the stacking community, we don't keep all of our money in the bank. We keep it in silver and gold. Uh, we keep reserves of cash as well, just in case we come across those emergencies. But there's many people that do not do that. In fact, I want to go over an article that I just read on CBS News that happened just over a week ago of a guy who posted on Twitter and the tweet went viral about how a bank seized his entire account. They locked it down. They didn't allow him to have access to it at all. He was unable to pay his bills, pay for his food or whatever, because he no longer had access to his money for as long as 20 days. So let's get into that really quick and talk to you about what happened there. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe and help us continue to grow the channel and check out this awesome giveaway from our sponsor, SD Bullion. SD Bullion is at it again. Last year, they gave away a full monster box of 2022 Silver Eagles. Now this year, they're doing it with a full monster box of 2023s. If you want your chance to win a full sealed monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles, make sure you head over to sdbullion.com forward slash silver seeker or click the link in the description below. Thank you to SD Bullion for sponsoring today's video. Now, what we're about to talk about in today's video is actually quite scary, but unfortunately way more common than you might think. It actually even happened to a coin shop just four months ago, and we talked about it right here on this channel named CoinHuskers, who they had their bank account closed at random as well. But in this story, we are going to talk about Elad Niharai. Now, Elad has a Twitter account where he originally posted this, and this went viral. And after it went viral, it was picked up by CBS Los Angeles, who we have a couple of excerpts from right here on the screen. And we're not going to read the entire article, though. If you want to go read the entire article, I will put a link below. But basically, Elad was told that his bank account was closed and he would not have access to any of his money for 10 to 20 days. And right here, as you can see, in quotes, he says, Bank of America told me it was shut down. They refused to give me an explanation. They told me I would get my money after it was resolved, which he says, by the way, would take 10 to 20 days. All of a sudden, I found out I'm broke. I can't feed my family. I can't pay any expenses. Now, I'm going to be honest, if the situation with this guy named Elad or if what happened to CoinHuskers back in March or what happens to people all over the U.S., which is way more common than you believe, isn't scary, if it doesn't bother you, this may not be the video for you. And I'm certainly not a fear monger. I don't try and fear monger people into thinking a certain way. That's not what I do. But this example is a perfect showcase with Elad, is a perfect showcase of why putting your money in the control of somebody else is almost never a good idea. Now, I'm not saying banks don't serve a purpose. They certainly do. And I have a bank account myself, which I keep money in, but I don't keep all of my money in there. If I lost access to my bank account today, I would be really unhappy and I would get it resolved, but I wouldn't go 10 to 20 days like Elad is going to do or did or whatever without having access to money because I have real money and currency ready to go. And I'm not just talking about silver and gold. We're a silver and gold stacking channel, of course but I also keep cash reserves on hand as well. Now, of course, I've never actually experienced this myself. So what I think we're gonna do is actually get Dave from CoinHuskers on the phone and get some information about how it happened for him. Because like we said earlier, Dave actually had this happen to him just four months ago to his coin shop. So let's get Dave on the phone and see what he has to say. All right, guys, so we are actually joined here by Dave from CoinHuskers, who went through the situation back in March. So Dave, can you just kind of give us a quick rundown of what happened? Yeah, so we got a letter back in March um, out of the blue just stating that First National Bank was closing our account with no reason, no cause given. So as soon as I got the letter, um, I called the bank, the number that was given on there, and the person. So it wasn't actually the branch that we do business with. It was another branch that we actually opened the account with that we had several relationships there and some of the bankers that we dealt with actually uh, were no longer there. So we didn't know the person that closed the account or the number was given. So we called and did not get any information as to why they closed our account. Um, so the only reason that we were basically possibly given was our bank manager uh, about a week later told us it was probably cash. And then there was a We Buy Gold 
down the street from us that they had the same letter given to them. And then there was actually another pawn shop um, in Omaha, Nebraska, that was given the same letter to their bank account were closed down. And we're all assuming that it was because of cash transactions. So you're saying you're assuming, so you never, even up until this point, late July, ever got an actual answer as to why that happened? 100% correct. So let me ask you this. What was the situation on you actually getting your money out of the account? Did you have to wait till like an investigation was done or did they allow you to withdraw it? How did that happen? Um, so they sent us two different checks back with giving our funds back. So we actually had one check, believe it or not, was for one penny. We left one cent in our account. And um, this was, so I actually had my business and personal accounts both closed down. So no reason given on both ends, but they closed my personal account down a week later after my business account was closed down and they just sent those two different checks back. Wow, so just just no no reason given, just absolute, look, you can't bank with this anymore. Here's your money back, you know, move on basically, right? Exactly. What do you do now? Do you keep multiple bank accounts? Do you keep cash aside as well, just in case that happens again? Do you worry about that happening again? Um, yeah, of course it's a worry. So we have actually three different bank accounts. Um, actually, the next day that we got that letter, U.S. Bank came to our office and, you know, we explained the situation that happened. So their standard rate to deposit cash for their business account is $0.37 cents per $100. So they were going to give us a deal. It took them about three months to come up with this, but they were going to charge us $0.18 cents uh, per hundred dollars of cash transactions. So we um, don't deposit cash with the U.S. banks. So we use U.S. Bank as our bigger bank, and then we use um, two smaller banks, and then we're actually probably going to open up another account. So we actually have three different bank accounts that we use right now to do business. Fair enough. Well, I appreciate the insight. Would you have any uh, advice for anyone that might be worried about this? Like maybe not on a business level, but uh, you said your personal account was closed as well. So what advice would you give to anyone to try and avoid something like this happening to them? Um, yeah, 100%. So we put in our own video to have multiple bank accounts. Uh, so if you think U.S. banks are safe, they're not. I mean, if you look at U.S. banks as a country, um, we're barely even in the top 40 of safest banks in the world. You can't even find one U U.S. bank in the top 40 of safest banks in the world. So the biggest biggest thing you can do is have multiple bank accounts and definitely keep cash at home or in a safe you know, place that you can get to with quick access. So that way, you know, if your account gets frozen for 10 to 20 days that you can pay your bills, uh, that's most importantly just to make sure you're having multiple bank accounts. And then for, if you can take it a step further, you know, have a foreign bank account, just um, to have that added layer of you know, protection for your capital. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, guys, I'm gonna put a link to his channel and to that video down below, so make sure you go check him out and uh, show him a sub as well, if you guys don't mind. And uh, Dave, thank you again for joining us. A uh, big thanks, Deborah Seeker, appreciate it. So there's a few things that we can take away from our conversation with Dave, and I'll start by noting that he said that two coin shops, his and one other, as well as a pawn shop, all got their accounts shut down by the same bank. Now, likely that's because they deal with a lot of cash and banks don't like people that deal with a lot of cash. One, they don't keep a lot of cash on hand. So if you're withdrawing a lot of cash, they don't like that because they don't always have a lot of cash in the bank. As you guys know, banks aren't required to keep a whole lot of cash at all on hand. And the majority of what people have invested in there, I won't say invested, but deposited into their accounts, they just use in loan out to make even more money. So yeah, you could, if every single person, I've said this before in other videos, if every single person that banked there went on the same day and tried to withdraw their money, that bank would go bankrupt immediately. They would need government bailouts and more. So that's one of the scary things about keeping your money in a bank account. If there's ever a run on banks and you need to get your money out, even though it is backed by the FDIC, you may not get it the same day. It could take a while. And then the other thing you have to think about with businesses that move a lot of cash in and out, and don't get me wrong, I'm not taking the side of banks when I say this. I don't want you to think I am at all, but I also kind of get it. There's a ton of government oversight. And when you have a business or even a person that's using a lot of cash, that might raise red flags that the bank isn't interested in dealing with with the government. I mean, they have to fill out paperwork for everything. And as you guys know, the government continues to put their hands in smaller and smaller cookie jars. 
I mean, the reporting threshold for payments online went from, I believe 20,000, is it, down to $600, at least that's what they're proposing. 600 bucks? I mean, that is your grandma sitting on a rocking chair making blankets and selling them to her friends online uh, to make a little bit of extra spending money for herself. And the government even wants their portion of that. To say it's disgusting is an understatement. And to say that we are not overtaxed, anyone that says that we are not overtaxed as Americans in today's world is absolutely insane. Uh, it is it is crazy the amount of t the amount of times we are taxed on the same exact money is unreal. And this isn't a political channel. This is a this is more about just what's going on with in general overall taxation. I mean, think about property tax, for example. Many states have property tax. Uh, if you buy a car in the state of Missouri, for example, you pay sales tax on it the day that you buy it, or you know, within the first month, you have to pay your sales tax to register the car. Then every single year, they tax you just for the privilege of owning it in the state of Missouri. Mm. And I know that Missouri is not the only state that has personal property tax. And then, of course, you have real estate tax as well, uh, which is basically another form of personal property tax. So you basically don't even own anything. And I know I'm kind of getting off on a rant here, but think about it. If you buy your house, if you work your butt off and pay your payments every single month and you pay the minimum, so you go the whole 30 years, there are ways you can pay off your house a lot faster and pay a lot less money uh, by the end of it. But you know we're not gonna get into that in this video because I'm not a financial advisor. But let's just say you work your butt off and you make those payments for 30 years and your house is 100% paid off. Congratulations, you own your house, except you don't because you go without paying that property tax for just a couple of years and the government comes and takes it from you anyway. You don't actually own anything. And it's unbelievable that we are okay. I mean, I don't think I don't think a lot of us are okay with this, but it's unbelievable that it's it's even happening at all. So, I don't know. I kind of got off course with the whole banking thing here, but it just kind of bothers me. And so I don't know. That's just my thoughts on the subject. As far as the guy at the beginning of the video that we talked about, I don't know what he was doing to cause the bank to close his account to have the government red flag his account. But having lost access to all of your money for 10 to 20 days is just unacceptable, which is why I said already in this video to make sure that you keep some cash on hand so that you can pay those emergency bills if something like that were to happen to you. If you were to lose access to your bank account, you don't wanna not be able to put food on the table and you know put gas in your car to get to work. So uh, make sure you have yourself prepared for that. And then as far as you know, gold and silver, I mean, this ties into gold and silver because it's just another example of how having physical assets, physical money like gold and silver is important. So obviously I always tell people that I believe in stacking gold and silver, you make your own decisions, but that is definitely one of the huge reasons for me is that, you know, the government can't randomly close my silver account because my silver account is something that I personally hold. So I don't know, let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to hear your comments down below. So do me a favor and leave them and let me know what you think. Do me another favor and don't forget to check out this video above. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm sure it's a great one and YouTube is recommending it to you for some reason. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and help YouTube recommend this video to others and we will see you in the very next video.